A good website. They uh, just um, make some Photoshop designs, and uh, the client thinks, uh, yeah, that is okay. But it's not always up to date. Some things change in the process of developing a website, so you uh, make changes uh, uh, based on the first drafts you make. You, you do the templates, you start with it, then you go to iterations and the client uh, may not be happy or wants to change something. So then the uh, documentation from the designer is not up to date. So I will talk a bit, uh, about this later, how to really have this up to date always. And uh, enable all members of the team to pair on its creation, maintenance and evolution. So what I mean with all members of the team, that is the designers, the front and the, the template uh, guys and the back end guys. 
and also the client, um, which should all be involved in this process. And uh, yeah. So, what we want to do here is not to only um, talk. Uh, so, I don't want to talk about uh, what's the difference between atomic design and component-driven design. I also want uh, the, the main goal for this was to make the customer really happy. And that's always the goal, because if we do something uh, yeah, where we, we sit together with the client and uh, talk about how should the design be and uh, how should it look like and we agree upon something and then in the end we program and we go <coughs> through iterations, but the customer is maybe not happy because um, yeah, we rely on the first draft the first uh, thing the designer delivers and this may be not the thing which the client really wants so yeah what makes the customer happy um, first we have the design documentation from the designer just a photoshop file maybe a pdf uh, i've also had uh, word files or excel sheets with uh, some basic designs or basic descriptions which is not so, yeah, it doesn't make me really happy uh, because uh, yeah, it's very static and it's, it's a documentation, it's a good start, but it's, no, it doesn't make me very happy and possibly the customer won't be happy as well. So then we have static style guides. So manually maintained website. Um, I've also created some manually maintained websites to describe what's uh, in the design so you can see a bit uh, how it looks like um, and it covers even some responsive things but mm, not so much um, and we have Zeppelin. Zeppelin, maybe you know this, is uh, yeah. if you design something in uh, Sketch or Photoshop you can export it to Zeppelin and which is a website who does uh, show the, the design and also the CSS specs. So for uh, front-end guy, this is very helpful because he can then see uh, what are the colors, what are the font sizes, what are the margins, the headings, and some really basic things you need to know to start working on CSS and templates. And here the client may be happy in some way but not fully and something uh, you have to provide is CSS documentation and there are some tools for it and but normally the the client cannot do much with it it's basically for uh, for documentation purposes and uh, yeah, not really something the client is happy so then we have a living style guide. Maybe not everyone has worked with it, but heard from it. And uh, living style guide is, for instance, Petalab or Fabricator. And uh, the benefit of a living style guide, or what a living style guide is, is that it's a website, but it's um, reflecting directly what you write in your SAS code, or which is then transformed to CSS and displays it instantly. So you write it and you see it. It's a yeah something like a visible for styles. And yes, the client will be happy with that because he instantly sees how everything behaves and uh, how an element looks like, how an atom looks like, how a component looks like, how it behaves, and yeah, that's what we are doing. And we're doing this with uh, Petalab. Petalab is uh, an interactive, responsive style guide organized around atomic design principles. It says here atomic design because initially Petalab was for atomic design, which you may all know, uh, that we have certain atoms, molecules, and yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and that is for many, many websites, it's okay to uh, build a style guide uh, with atomic design, but not necessarily in Drupal. In Drupal, so we have a lot of components, we have uh, paragraphs, 
and certain things and uh, so we were not really happy with atomic design at that place. Um, of course we, uh, we started with atomic design in our first project but then we, we thought about it, uh, wouldn't it be better to differentiate between uh, really content things and uh, yeah, other things which are not really related to content. So we have in Petalab, we have nested patterns. We can design with dynamic data. We are versatile, simple rapid prototyping, and even extensible. So we can choose our own templating engine, so we are not rely on Twig or anything like that. So we can use whatever we like and to better match the product production environment. So yes. So I can show you how Pattern Lab really looks like. So that's basically how Pattern Lab looks like. This is from our new website uh, for our company. And uh, yeah, you can see on top it's uh, base atoms, molecules, organisms, templates. This is what uh, we started with our new websites some time ago, not component driven, but in the atomic design. But you can see here we define the base, we define color bars, color used, and uh, the grid system, the spacings, basic form elements, and you can find it all here in, for instance, in base, you have the breakpoints, the grids. Uh, we can see. So this is grid system here. So, yeah, even with uh, with an outer margin, and uh, then the benefit of this pattern lab is that you can uh, resize it right here. So you can resize it and see instantly how it behaves. So how the columns are changing, how the gutter is behaving in this case. So then we have, uh, yeah. so that's basic. Okay. So you see, there's uh, an example I want to show you, which is a cart. You all know carts. And you can see here how it will behave in, and how it's changing. If you want to change the font size, you instantly see it here, uh, which I cannot test here because I have no development environment. But I uh, have made some screen recordings, which I can show to you later. OK, but back to the presentation. So, what we do? Um, yeah, we component-driven design. So we have changed that. I've uh, just talked about it a bit. And uh, components are the reusable chunks of websites like headers and footers. They can range in size and complexity from small buttons, image links, medium, header, footer, cards to large article lists, components. So. This is one way to approach it, just from small to large. But you can also approach it from what's uh, the real purpose of it. So some things are really related to content, like you have uh, a photo gallery, which is very heavily dependent on the content. And uh, some things you have which are buttons. A button is a button, it doesn't necessarily um, rely on any content. There can be any text in it. And uh, so we have really some, yeah, a different way to approach it. So in the base class, or the base folder, we have base setup like colors, breakpoints, uh, yeah, styling of elements, and uh, some spacings, really some, some basics. Uh, which reflects all the basic HTML elements. 
so it's the basis uh, for everything you need. There are nearly every variable is defined in this folder. And we have atoms. These are small reusable components, uh, links buttons, form elements, just some basic HTML things. Then we have site elements, which are uh, various site elements like menus, breadcrumbs, which are not relying on any content. So a breadcrumb can uh, be different on several pages. So the, the content is really different, but you have to, this is a basic site element. <laughs> then we have the layouts, um, which you all know in Drupal, we, we have certain layouts for as a, a normal page, maybe just a, a, a landing page or something else. Then we have side regions. You all know the regions like header, footer, uh, left sidebar, right sidebar, content, and whatever. And then we have content, which are uh, various content elements. Um, yeah, editorial content elements, uh, display variants, and listings of it. So we have divided it into, yeah, so with the atomic design, you would start with a <coughs> simple card for it. Or one uh, step back, you, you have a, an image, you have a headline, you have a text, these are basic things. Then you start <coughs> building a card, which consists of an image, headline, and text. And then you start building a listing of cards, which are more and more cards together. But in this case, we this is all content. So what's in Atoms is only the basic, the headline, the image, the text. And in content, because it all relies on content, will be the card and also the card listing. So this is a bit different to the atomic design where you start from small to big. And here are some things which are also combined together. And then, of course, we have the pages. OK, so then go back here. OK, we have seen this. And so I want to show you here. So, you see, we have the cards in different variation. We have a brand card, we have a gray card, and then we have the card listing, which is just a list of cards. So, uh, with this approach here, uh, we can make the customer really happy because what happens here, the normal designer would say, okay, it behaves in, uh, in a desktop environment like this with three columns. Then we have a um, tablet environment where we have two columns and a mobile phone with only one column. That's all the designer would say. But what happens in between and what happens with these different heights of cards, different types of cards? So the client doesn't know really. The client has an idea what should happen, but the designer really cannot produce hundreds of image slides and whatever to reflect this. So here with this uh, pattern lab and with the uh, living style guide, you can easily and instantly see it. And so I just will resize it. And now what happens? There was a um, flip for one card. And this is done by a masonry. And this is a special library who automatically adjust every space you find here and fills it with some card. And that's something uh, a designer cannot think about, or maybe he thinks about, but how can he describe it? How can he make a PDF which reflects like just like that? And uh, so the client can see it and he can say, okay, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Or maybe he says, oh no, that's not really what I want. I want it to be in a fixed order. 
and then we can talk about this with the client if this is the right approach and he can play with it so it's uh, it's online for the client and uh, he can give us feedback and so we can uh, work with it we can change it in code instantly and say okay if he doesn't want this teaser to be uh, with a green background, maybe with a blue background, uh, then we can instantly change it and he sees it, how it will behave. Yeah, and even here with the mobile phone, you see how it's doing. And even the font size, it changes. So you can resize it fluently, and then you can see, okay, that's exactly what I want. And uh, with this living style guide, we can we, we will always be in contact with the client. So we have iterations in in, in a short time, and uh, <coughs> yeah, we can instantly react on things the client wants, and we don't have to wait to program anything. And uh, the the additional benefit is. This is purely front-end. So nothing has been programmed in Drupal yet. So we have made the stylings. We have created the tweak templates, which are part of the Pattern Lab. But we don't have programmed anything in Drupal yet. So maybe it's the other way around, that uh, already the back-enders have programmed everything and provided the uh, Drupal templates. But the benefit here is that you include those templates in the Drupal templates. So if you need uh, a card listing, you only care about uh, the where you want to place it. You create a Drupal template, or you have a Drupal template with your view, and then uh, you say, OK, include this card listing from Pattern Lab. And uh, then you don't care about anything else. Everything is done in the front end and only included into the Drupal template. I will show it to you later. Once the templates are ready for production, they can easily be connected to Drupal by using simple tweak functions in the Drupal templates to include, extend, or embed the component files. So it's not only included, it can also be embedded. And that's a big advantage because in Pattern Lab, you, do, you have example content. And you can only show example content if you put it into uh, blocks. And uh, then after that, you replace those example blocks with the things you really have in your Drupal environment. OK. And then, <coughs> yeah, we started to build our own setup. So this is called Lupus Assets Mix Repo. Don't ask me why. It's uh, that name. Right? So this is a Laravel mix. It uh, has Webpack in it. And it has a pattern left front end. And you need for it only Node 6.1. Uh, optionally, you need to uh, manage Node uh, via NVM. And run only once npm install. You only have to install it once and everything uh, is installed in your environment. To get it to work you have to build the theme and this is done by, uh, by a script or build the theme and uh, work on it and then it automatically refreshes. Oh. Yeah. So then I will show you the folder tree structure, how it looks like. So you see, that's that's all there is included. So you see on top there is um, uh, the pattern lab folder and uh, yeah, some basic readmes. Uh, we have the script folder with the scripts, with this build script where you can run it. And uh, the important part is the source folder. In the source folder, we have the components, which are, yeah, we have seen the base. It's, uh, for instance, colors. 
and uh, you have a twig file, you have a JSON file, or possibly you have a YAML file, and uh, the CSS file. And everything which is in the components folder underneath it gets compiled. And uh, in, yeah, in the following order with uh, starting from zero to yeah, the next number. And if you don't number it uh, in the base, it's needed because it's dependent. Breakpoints are dependent, not on colors, but the grid is dependent on breakpoints. So we have to uh, regard a special order. But not for the other things. So, oops. yeah, we have the atoms, then the side elements, which are in this case logo, menu, messages page title, we have the layout of the site, we have the site regions, footer, header, uh, we have content, article, article list, and uh, yeah, these are the files which are included in the Lupo Assets uh, mix. Okay, then we have some another folder which is called CSS where we have all the mixings. So this is decoupled from uh, the components. We have uh, all the mixins <coughs> in one folder. So you can, uh, yeah, if you want to uh, have a certain function, so, so you look into this folder and uh, place your mix in there or find it there. And then there's another folder which is called Pattern Lab, which is uh, especially for Pattern Lab. So you don't want to have every style in your front end from the client and to do. So there are some things you want only want in Pattern Lab. And this goes here. Then we have icons. Uh, with this setup um, you can also build your icon font, which is very cool, because you only place your SVG in this icon folder. And uh, then it gets automatically transferred to an icon font. So you can use everything you want uh, as an icon font, like your logo or some Twitter icons or so. Use it only with an icon font and you're done. And you don't have to care about uh, how to create it. It will be automatically created uh, while you run it. Okay, yeah, even JavaScript, the basic pattern apps. And uh, in the template folder are the templates for, yeah, you use in Drupal. So only here are the Drupal templates. Okay. So then I will show you how this really works. So I can have only a screencast of it, but I <coughs> think uh, you will see how it works. So here in Pattern Lab we have a logo, and this logo we have the trick file. So I'll switch back a bit. So yeah, the trick file you have to find the logo uh, with just an anchor and an image, and um, the source of this uh, so the logo actually is in the assets pattern lab folder and uh, and there is an image folder which you cannot see here but um, all the images are actually in the assets folder you can place it in, in a image folder here and it automatically gets into the assets folder so and there's a YAML file. This YAML file is only for pattern lab. It has nothing to do with the uh, website or what's in Drupal. It's only for displaying purposes in uh, pattern lab. And yeah, we have the CSS here. And here it changes the width. And you see it's instantly, if you save it, it's instantly built. And you can just see how it behaves. Okay, let's switch back to the page. So, here it is. Mm, is it? 
So, yeah, change it to 40 pixels, save it, and you see it's instantly refreshed. That's uh, what is automatically done. So while you are just working on, on a template or working on SCSS, you can just see it in the other window and uh, so you see your result. And you can even uh, have a date at your customer and just work with it and say, okay, maybe this logo is too small in that environment, just change it. And so you change it and you see it and the client sees it too. And yeah, everyone uh, gets a result uh, uh, which uh, everyone is expecting. So how is this then connected to Drupal? So here we have an example where we have a Drupal website. And you see, okay, this is the image, this is the custom block with the branding. So we have here in the Drupal template the block custom theme, breadcrumbs. Uh, we switch to <coughs> debugging true. Um, then you clear the cache and then you see uh, all the um, yeah, all the template suggestions. And you see it's a block system branding block, and that's the thing which you have to change. Okay, this is uh, prepared. So we include it here. And we include the code for the uh, for the branding of the logo. This is just coming directly. You can also have this in, in uh, Drupal, and this is uh, not really a great change. Only what you do, you don't uh, display the logo here like it's in the classy template or so. Uh, you include uh, the tweaked template. You include site elements, logo, logo tweak, and you pass the, uh, the the anchor and the title to it. And then let's see what happens. Site elements. You see, that's in site elements. That's the tweak file we are actually using. And then this is replaced here, the logo href, and so you see. So there you see, the logo has changed, and uh, the anchor has changed. Yeah, and so you instantly see what happens. Uh, you just have to include a pattern lab into your normal Drupal template. And uh, this is done, yeah, this is really something which can be done independently. So the backend developers have only to think about their code and not about the front end. So if they want to include the right file, which the front end guy has already <coughs> done, he just includes it or he just embeds it. And that's all he has to do. That's very, from our perspective, it's, it's really cool, and so they can work independently, but they depend on each other. So if uh, the backender has some functions ready, he can then uh, ask the front-end guy, can you provide this to me? And he can say, okay, I have time there and there, and I can provide it to you. And uh, the front-end guy doesn't have to care about the back-end guy. They will then work together when every component is ready. Okay. So how much time is left? No, uh, I think you can go on. So, yeah, then you have seen uh, 
we have this uh, include add site element. But where is it defined? It's defined in this custom theme info. And there are all the component libraries, all the files are defined here. So it's very easy to use them. And you don't have to include um, absolute paths everywhere. You can work with these add site elements or add content or whatever. And then I will show you one last example where we have an article list. And this is a real example or <coughs> just a test example for a Drupal website. You see it here, we have um, the pattern app, which is just a, yeah, a teaser image with a headline. And we have this article list small, which is just a small list with just three teaser images and text. And it behaves like this, that three images are displayed in, in a desktop environment and two only in a tablet environment. So this is actually the Petalab template. We have here the, uh, the image and the text in this uh, template. We have the YAML file with all the test uh, data in it. And uh, there we have the listing of this. And the listing is simply just what you can see here. The listing is just uh, four uh, iteration and it iterates uh, over the articles, article small, and then includes uh, this uh, small article. And you also can see that we have put this in, in a block. So if you don't put it in a block, then this will always be rendered. So you cannot embed this template in your Drupal environment if this is not put into a block. Uh, and this allows you to put your own content into this block, which we can see later. Okay, so here's the CSS. So we have done everything in BAM, which is uh, yeah, not or not necessary, but uh, we work with being is then we have here the different uh, YAML files and we also have modificators for it so you can have uh, small, wide or whatever which influences uh, the style of it. So here we are on the Drupal website. We create an article, just a test article. Then we have, we see, we have created three articles here, and that's how it lo normally looks in in Drupal. Just nothing really styled. So you have uh, only an image and a text. That's a view, just a basic view for articles where you combine, where you list all articles. And you see we have three articles, not styled, not in any way. Uh, so there is no template which does the style here. But we will just create one. So we have managed display, yes, and we have teaser. So we decide what to put into the teaser. We put an image summary, just a label. Just basic stuff. And then we look into the code. So we have the template suggestions, uh, which is not very easy for views, <coughs> but for everything else, so for, for a note or so, it's clear. But for the views, you uh, in Drupal 7, there were template suggestions for views. But in Drupal 8, you 
yeah, you don't have to guess it. There are special uh, yeah, conventions like how to do it. Um, yeah, but first, we have the node article teaser, which is uh, yeah, the teaser template. So the single teaser, and we're just creating it. And in this teaser template, you embed the uh, article small, which we have already seen in PatternLab. And we uh, pass by the, the title uh, as a label, the URL, and the image is a content field image. So you get the right content into the, your teaser. Next thing to do is to find the right uh, view. <coughs> okay, but first we have to flush all the caches to see how a single teaser looks like. So you see now it looks much better. So we have uh, embedded the, the small article into the um, uh, small or the teaser article, and uh, instantly it uh, is reflected here. So we get the layout from the pattern lab into our Drupal template. <coughs> and then next is the, the view, which we have to also style or uh, create a template for it. And you see the view name is uh, page one, and it's called the articles. So this is then called views view uh, articles page one. And it's uh, always the same pattern with the views. Okay, so then what we do here, you see, we include, uh, we embed the, uh, from the pattern lab, we include the small article list. And uh, we pass by uh, the title the size, the size is short, so we can also have even uh, a layout for wider teasers or smaller teasers or whatever. And uh, yeah, also another variable with modification with border, uh, and then you can pass by every variable which you uh, want to influence your layout. And then there is this uh, block here, which replaces the block uh, defined in this article list. So um, to be able to show what's in your view. And you only pass by the row.content, which is the content of your view. see here we have the different sizes short middle wide which is available uh, yeah the classes and then you can see also in the um, uh, SCSS there's also the short variation defined and if you all do it with BAM then it's very easy to to find everything so Save it. And we go to the list. And we do our clear and cache. And then what happens there? There happens that there is only some error. So that's the quiz here. Why is there an error? So you see before. It was not intended uh, from uh, for me to uh, have an error, but it happens. So now there's only a row dot content, and uh, yeah, why it happens? It's very easy because you see here there's only row dot content in it, and uh, it's not resolved. 
So actually to resolve it, you have to put it into curly brackets. And Okay, there's C, there it is. Put it in there and it will be rendered. Save it, reload it, and there you have it. There you have all your teasers. And it didn't take longer than five or 10 minutes. So it, it behaves the same as in Pattern Lab. And uh, you see the backend guy doesn't have to care about the front end. It just embeds everything and uh, it's displayed like in Pattern Lab, like in the front end. Okay. So we have about ten minutes. Right? Yep. So yeah, and <coughs> So, yeah, I want to thank you. I have some put some resources here in it. So you see the Lupus Assets Mix repo is uh, directly from Genomics from us, Laravel Webpack Tweak documentation, and Petalab. Thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, <coughs> yeah. Have you already worked with UI patterns uh, module? which combines Pattern Lab with uh, Drupal more. Could you just pick the question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with UI patterns. Uh, so this is actually the Lupus Assets Mix repo which we provide. It does actually this. So it combines uh, Pattern Lab with Twig and with Drupal. This is already the combination. It's an optimized uh, package. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are others on the market, but uh, this is the one we developed and uh, it reflects our component-driven design and not the atomic design. Um, but you can easily change it. Um, the folder structure is just uh, some suggestion which we provide because we like to work in that way. And But you can also change it and put it, everything into one folder or just get rid of um, the backend which we have. So we use Singularity for the grid system, but you can use um, Bootstrap if you like, or whatever, uh, or Burn Meet, whatever you want. So it's open to every framework uh, uh, and open to the folder structure you want to use. Uh, everything which is in the components folder gets compiled, and uh, so we don't care what's really in there. And it's yeah, I think uh, it's a very open uh, architecture. Yeah, no more questions, so thank you for your attention.